Hey guys, I just wanted to show you what I got in the mail. It's actually been about uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I'm just now getting around to making another video. I apologize for that. Uh, Rob, I really appreciate the sticker. I'm sorry, it's a magnet actually. It uh, with a photograph that slides down there from the top. That's a very unique idea, and I've got it right here on my fridge, so every time I go to get a cold one out of here, I'll think about you, buddy. Here is kind of what I'm working on now. I've pretty much got the suspension buttoned up on the front end. Hold on a second. Yes? What? What? Are you talking? You going to talk to the YouTube guys? Yeah, I'll tell them about it. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I've got the uh, suspension on the front end pretty well leveled out. I did a little bit of uh, dry assembly on it to make sure that it was going to bolt up. Everything seems like it's going to line up pretty well. I didn't want to get everything together because that just increases the weight of the car. It makes it a lot harder to get it down off of the uh, rotisserie. So I'm actually going to turn around and take all that back apart. And I've started working on the uh, rear suspension. And some of you guys probably already know what this is just by looking at it. Uh, John Kerry, I'm sure, knows what it is uh, and what it's out of. This is actually an independent rear suspension out of a 19, I think, 86 Jaguar uh, S-Series, I believe. I'd have to look at that book to see what I got it out of. I got it out of pull-apart and took this thing apart, and I'm going to rebuild it. I got all the parts from a place in uh, Washington State, I believe it's called Concourse West Incorporated or International or something like that, CWI for short. They've got all the rebuild kits for it, uh, the new brake rotors, uh, all the seals and stuff to go in the uh, carriers. Uh, basically, all the bearings, anything you'd need to rebuild one of these units. But the only thing I'd have to do is I'm going to have to get some more shocks and out there. Again, I'll get those from them. But I've got this thing pretty well torn apart. Now comes the fun, cleaning everything up, sandblasting it, uh, taking all the old hardened grease and everything out. Uh, I'm also going to do a check on the ring and pinion inside of the uh, rear end. This is actually uh, kind of like a Dana 45, I believe. That's what they said this is approximate to. But it's only got like a 288 gear in it, and I'm not sure I really like that. It probably would be good for top end and for fuel mileage, but it's not real good for uh, performance, I wouldn't think. But I'm not going to be drag racing this car, so I'm probably going to leave that in there for a while, and if I don't like it, I can always change it. Uh, it's not a real big deal to drop the stump out of this. It's basically got about uh, 12 or 14 bolts. But the way this thing is assembled is it's got the center section. And then right off the center section, you've got four bolts, and that's where your brake rotors bolt up, which is kind of unique because it actually puts the rotors in next to the stump. Uh, in later model Jaguars, I'm not sure if they thought that that was causing a heat buildup and causing axle seals to fail or what, but they actually started putting them outboard next to where the wheels are. That's one thing I really liked about the way this is set up, is it's inboard, so when you look at the wheels, all you really see is the carrier hub, which when it's cleaned up and either polished or uh, powder coated, it looks really good. You don't see the brake rotor, you don't see the calipers or anything, so it looks really nice. The main reason I'm doing this, though, is for the suspension handling of this car. Your Corvettes, uh, at least all the ones that I know of uh, after the 50-something model, came with independent rear suspension as opposed to a solid axle. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be drag racing this car. A lot of the guys that uh, bought the Cobra Mustangs and stuff, which actually some of those had the independent rear suspension, were removing them and putting in solid axles for drag racing. The way this is set up, if one wheel hits a pothole, it's not going to bump steer and jerk the other wheel in the opposite direction, up or down. So you're going to get a lot better handling car out of that. That's why a lot of your higher-end cars, like the Jaguar, and I'm sure there are plenty others, use the independent rear suspension. That's why Corvette uses it. There's a website that I go to quite often. Uh, it's the Independent Rear Suspension Forum. Uh, it's run by a gentleman by the name of Dave Scoble. And he's the one that actually got me started on this, watching him, because he's doing it in a 65 Mustang, which is a little bit more difficult than what I'm doing, because those are a little bit smaller than the 67, 8, and 9. So I'm kind of following his progress and kind of doing a lot of the same things he's doing. The only difference is he actually made like an H-bracket, which bolts into the original spots where the springs bolt into the car. 
so that he could make his removable by unbolting that H bracket. I'm actually going to modify this cage that the whole assembly mounts into where the brackets are which fit under the old frame rails on the Jaguar. I'm going to shorten this just a little bit and make some new brackets to mount it to the existing frame rails with some new, more stiffeners and a couple other items to help hold it in place. So a little bit different. Uh, I'm not really concerned about modifying the car and then someone not liking it later on. I plan on being buried in this car when I die so I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. The main thing I want to make sure is I get the thing in there straight, square, plumb, level, and everything else. It's kind of weird the way this uh, rear end is designed. The drive axle is actually one of your two components for the uh, trailing arms. That's actually kind of like your upper control arm. And then you've got this H member right here, which is your lower control arm, which your shocks mount to. Between those two mounting, one, the axle shaft goes through the hole, and then this uh, bolt up here on this actually goes through the uh, housing. That's what actually holds this in the correct fashion. And since they're both the same equidistant, I think that's the right term, uh, length, no matter where they move on their pivot points, it keeps the uh, hub basically in the correct vertical orientation to keep the wheel planted firmly on the road. The axle shaft actually is splined on the end and it slides through here with the bearings and the grease and everything in it. And then on the other side is where the hub actually bolts to it. And it actually comes out of the side like that. If you notice, I actually had to have the uh, hub pattern redrilled. These come out with a Chevrolet bolt pattern. So for you Chevrolet guys out there, Darren, you with the Nova, if you guys decided you wanted to do something like this, the rear end's already set up for a Chevrolet bolt pattern, so you guys are all set. Uh, I had to have this, uh, like I said, redid for a Ford bolt pattern. And I also had to have just a small fraction of this lip, this uh, center portion that the wheel actually sits on, shaved down. I think he had to go down like four thousandths for a slip fit into the wheels that I purchased because uh, the hole in the center of a Chevrolet wheel is just minutely bigger than the Ford wheel. So after I took these with me and I had them shave them both down to they fit the wheels that I got to go in the car, made sure the bolts and everything lined up, I was all set. I put new wheel studs in, but another modification I had to do was to actually grind just a small amount off the back of the wheel stud head because there's a dust shield which actually snaps into this recess to keep dirt from getting in around these splines where it sits down inside of this. So in order to make that clear, I had to do a little modification on those. I didn't get real carried away and I took my time so I didn't get them hot and got both of the hubs done. So I'm sorry about not making any videos lately. Uh, I've been caught up in uh, all the stuff going on around the holidays. I also got kidnapped into uh, Skyrim. That's video game. Unfortunately I've been kind of wasting time playing with that instead of uh, working on the car. Uh, <laughs> I have been watching all you guys videos and I got to thinking, man, I'm being lazy, so I'm going to have to get off my rear end to get out here to the garage and get something done. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea of what's been going on here. Uh, I did have a couple of questions, though. I went the other day to get some uh, Duraglass or whatever you guys are using to fill some areas on the uh, car that's got lead in it. Now, I thought about putting the lead back, but I wasn't real crazy about that because I'm having to deal with it, so I'm just going to take a torch and heat it. Uh, and gently remove it with uh, just a hand wire brush so as I don't make it uh, airborne and breathe it in or anything. I'm also going to wear a, a part particulate mask. But when I went to get the uh, stuff from the parts guy at the uh, paint store, my local paint store, he gave me this. He said, this is what a lot of these guys are using. And Matt, slow SRT, if I'm not mistaken, in one of your videos, I thought I saw a container of this sitting down on your bottom shelf. And I was kind of wondering what you or any of the rest of you guys had uh, if you'd ever use this, it's called All Metal from USC. The gentleman told me that's what a lot of those guys are actually using instead of putting the uh, uh, short strand fiberglass in there they're doing this. And I wanted Gerald's opinion on it before I even opened it and uh, if you had used it and if you were satisfied with the performance of the product or if you would recommend that I actually went and got the Duraglass instead. He said I could return this if I didn't want to use it as long as it wasn't open. So I'd kind of like Gerald's input, either uh, PM me or in comments below on this uh, video. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, let's see, nine minutes, okay. Uh, oh, my technical assistant's over here. He's panicking. Hang on just a second. What's going on, buddy? What you want? Are you panicked? Are you panicked? 
it's okay. I'm just talking to the YouTube guys. Can you hold on for just a few minutes? I can't let you out. You'll run off. Okay. Uh, Rick, uh, the Rick Fix, he was uh, working on his Nova, and that car is actually looking really, really good. But he actually found something, or someone gave him something, that I thought was kind of neat. And a paper oil can. I'm sure some of you older guys out there my age and older, uh, that used to be the standard thing with the punch down uh, oil thing in it back before they ever thought about putting them in plastic containers. I'm not real sure how old this one is. I couldn't even find a date on it. But I'm thinking, judging by the color and stuff, that it's probably as old as that one you've got, Rick. Maybe even just a little more, I'm not sure. But I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, there ain't no sharks that you're doing. Those things are cool. I really like the way those are turning out. That's going to make some kick-ass chairs. That guy's got a pretty good idea. Uh, I'm going to and pet my dog. He's panicking. Uh, I wrote a couple other things down so I wouldn't forget you guys. Uh, i got to watch my time. Though. I don't want to go over 15 minutes. But that uh, nitrous bottle that you did, man, that thing looked like it was covered in a piece of purple glass. I mean, that thing just turned out awesome. I was real pleased uh, to see how you did that. That was neat. I just hope the guy doesn't scratch it up whenever he puts it in his brackets or whatever he's uh, bolting it into. That would really suck. Let's see what else I got here. Uh, Craig, I noticed where you were using that uh, UHMW plastic to make those uh, pieces for your door latches. That was actually a wonderful idea. I thought about doing something similar to that on some of these bushings and stuff in this car. Uh, but the rebuild kit that I got from CWI actually included some, which were the UHMW material as opposed to uh, ball bearings or sleeves. And I had some concerns about that, but they said that that stuff, given the application and where it is, there's no shear on it, would work actually better than uh, a brass sleeve would for what they sent me. So that's pretty cool stuff. Tom, I see where you got your paint gun that you ordered, or your paint gun that you ordered. That thing looks so nice. You're going to have to show us what it looks like tonight when you spray that. Uh, vehicle that you're working on. I'm sure that thing lays out like glass. That's probably one of the later things I've got to get. I want to get me a good spray gun. I've actually got a, uh, it's like an old Sharp HVLP gun. You can't even buy parts for it anymore. That's what I sprayed this, all the vehicles I've sprayed up to this point. But then I was using uh, acrylic enamel. But I'm making the switch over to base coat clear coat because I'm going to buy my paint from uh, Darren and Andrea when I get to that point. Unfortunately, I'm still quite a ways away from that. I'm still on all the mechanical stuff and the sheet metal work and everything. But that's going to be my goal, too, whenever I get ready, is uh, get me one of those Sokola guns like you got from uh, Darren. So that's cool. Uh, Jeff, I watched your video today, James Freddy's, uh, where you guys were putting those sides on that uh, 55, or I'm sorry, 57. That thing looked awesome. Uh, I'm not real big on four doors either, but I tell you what, I'd drive that car anywhere. It looked awesome when you guys got done with it. It's going to be a nice car. Uh, John Carey, 63 Jag. Uh, those videos you did when you uh, went to Hong Kong and stuff, they were tremendous. Uh, thanks for taking us along, letting us see all that stuff where you were over there. Uh, I can't wait to see what they've gotten done on your car when you get back. And uh, any input you've got on this uh, Jaguar rear end that I'm rebuilding. Uh, sources for parts other than CWI uh, or any other information that you've got that would uh, help out, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd let me know if I'm doing something wrong or right. Of course, that's for anything I'm doing, guys. That's all of you out there. If you see something I'm doing that's silly, doesn't make sense, I'm doing it in the wrong order or anything, that's what I'm here for is to learn from all of you. So I'd greatly appreciate anything that you could tell me that would uh, help me do this correctly, help me do it quicker, easier, cheaper. Uh, so I'm open to any suggestions, and I appreciate everybody's ideas. Uh, let's see. Musty, one, uh, repairing that Westphalia. That thing's going to be pretty neat when you get done. Uh, make a real nice camper and stuff out of it. Seems like you've got to have to work on about every part of that thing, but it's going to turn out cool when you get done with it. I really like the uh, trike when you got done. I've watched your videos when you built that thing and rode it. it looked like you were kind of taking your life in your own hands the way you were driving that thing up on two wheels and stuff. Maybe you ought to get you a helmet or have Darren send you that one like he's got. So that was cool. Uh, Ron, the wrecking yard, uh, your truck's turning out awesome, man. I really like how you're uh, getting all that stuff finished up and put together. It's all in the details, and it looks like you are a real particular person when it comes to the details, and I don't blame you. I'm kind of the same way, and in a way, that kind of slows me down a lot. That's why I don't get a lot.